T-minus three, two, one, zero. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Launch Sequence Podcast. I got another episode for you. And uh, this one is a special one. We're going to be talking about master modes, fix, finishing up some of the coverage I've been doing over the last couple of weeks, and obviously a lot of the conversation that's been going on. Uh, but we got a special guest today, actually the one of the people behind the system itself, and also Avenger One, who is on with me uh, just a couple of weeks ago to talk about this. And we are just going to dive deep into the flight model. So thank you so much for joining me, Yogi. Appreciate you. Uh, sure. Hey. Welcome on. And Avenger One, thank you as well. Welcome. All right, so um, before we get started, I want to thank supporters, obviously, for making this possible. You guys are here live. If anybody wants to join this podcast live, feel free to uh, sign up on Patreon or YouTube. And if not, well, this is always coming out on audio platforms, so keep an eye out. Before we get started, though, before we jump into everything, um, I want to let people get a little bit of an introduction to where you guys are coming from and for anybody who may not have a preamble for this show, why we're even having this talk. So... Uh, Yogi, if we could start with you, how did you yeah. come across Star Citizen and when? Across Star Citizen? Yeah. Oh, it was back in uh, 2012. Uh, yeah, basically that. Uh, I saw the announcement for Star Citizen and I'm uh, basically booked stuff right away. Uh, my wife was a little bit awkward about this because I said, uh, I'm going to buy or I'm going to spend like, I don't know, maybe 120, 130 euros or something like that for a game that doesn't exist. And this was right while we were at university, we're low on money. And she was like, what? So, um, but yeah, this, I, uh, I just thought the vision and all that was great. I, I always loved uh, CRS games. So, um, so you started as a player? A, yeah. Okay. And when did you start working with CIG? Uh, this was about 2017. Uh, I was working at Frontier as a uh, audio programmer. And uh, Brexit happened, and uh, we wanted to leave the UK. So, um, and CIG had a studio in Frankfurt, and um, I knew the audio director back then. Um, so I switched. Okay. And, uh, it was like no problem. Like the audio team liked me enough to <laughs> to take me on. Ah, audio was a great time. I loved working audio. So, was that a is that like a normal transition to go from audio to designing a flight model? How did that happen? No. No, I mean, I mean, no, no, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, while I, while I was playing, I don't know which which version it was. Two uh, two thousand seventeen. I think this was before the three point before three point oh. Like That'd be two point yeah, six. Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So a little bit after three point oh, I started uh, fiddling around in the uh, in the head tracking stuff um, because back then head tracking was like just offsetting the camera, and so basically when you would use Tracker R to offset your camera in the cockpit or look left and right. Basically, it, it offset this just uh, from the helmet. So you would look left and you looked right into the into the helmet. Um, and I hated that because <laughs> this is the thing that actually made me stop playing Star Citizen because I was so annoyed by that because I always played flight sims and I love head tracking. Uh, so I basically asked uh, Jens back then, who is uh, he's now like a coding director, but uh, um, for uh, the gameplay coding director. So back then I asked him, could I just change? Then he was like, yeah, sure, put it in. And then uh, and then the next thing that I can remember in that regard is that uh, Chris asked me to do some look-ahead stuff based on the head tracking work. And then because I couldn't manage my, my uh, gameplay and audio things at the same time, I just swapped then basically full time to gameplay. Okay. So how did and then, you... Oh, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. And then over time, it's just like um, at, at at the time when the swap happened, we uh, the vehicle experience team was 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 um, was created, and then we basically like the task of that team was to just improve the gameplay. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, it took ownership about uh, certain tuning variables. It took ownership about the experience, how the cockpit feels, and so on. Um, but uh, yeah, and then it basically went on from there. You were talking about uh, before the podcast, we were chatting, and you were saying that you have thousands of hours in dcs flight simulator um <laughs> yeah so has that always been is that is that why you got into star citizen because of the flight stuff or was it just the overall game itself no it was it was the flight stuff i always liked spaceships more and planes more than i like cars <laughs> so um 
it just it's 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 just natural interest for me. Um, the DCS stuff is like I mean, it it helps with understanding flight mechanics. It helps with understanding uh, comp, uh, com combat geometries and all that. Although DCS is not really transferable to Star Citizen directly, um, we definitely can learn a couple of things from that. Um, it's also like the feeling that some players want when they when they basically think about the let's say the experience they want to have in, in, in stars and then compare that to a similar flight and then some some things you can you can take on like how the cockpit feels when we have like taking or something like that or the feeling that your cockpit is so much under stress and it might fall apart or something like that so a couple of things are transferable but um Trick ships. overall i just i just like i just like planes and spaceships okay avenger how about you what got you into star citizen uh, the original Kickstarter, being a fan of the games and being, you know, obsessed with the same kind of stuff Yogi's talking about. Airplanes okay. have been a part of my life and space shooter games since the 90s, you know, playing x vs. TIE Fighter and all that stuff. And then I played Star Wars Squadrons. And it's just, you know, from one to the next, I've been playing basically every space combat shooter game under the sun until I got Star Citizen. And I fell in love with SC, you know, because at the time it was like the... And the 1.6 and then the 2.6 and 3.0 was a little rough and then it started getting much better and then by the end of like the 316 era it was quite good again and then when yogi came out with the live model um that's when it really for me that's when it's like it went from i love the game to i don't want to play anything else ever and uh now we're here. fighting words when was that uh when when was what like when, when when was that changeover that you said that you didn't enjoy playing anymore? No, 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 no. At no point have I not enjoyed playing. I'm saying it got to the point where I went from I love this game to I don't want to play anything else but this game. Oh, and I thought you were when, saying you don't want to play live... this game. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was like, all right, we're no, getting the, started. The live... <laughs> no, no, the live model is when for me it's like, yeah, that's when I started the YouTube channel and, and started okay. teaching people what I know about flight games. And then... Uh, yeah, it just kind of went from there. And, and now we're here at Masterminds. Then let's you start remember what the version oh. was back then. So with the original, like when you first came out with the new the new flight model. So when you remember that interview you guys had and you're saying uh went and spoke to some pilots and uh you know, talking about the Oh okay, there was and three and like three fifteen ish ish, three, right? Fourteen yeah. fourteen that, and something, yeah. Yeah, maybe, right? Uh, that I was when every patch since the beginning. Um every flight mode, every model. Um, even the ones with the bad head tracking <laughs> and you know for me that's that's when the game really really became something special for me I think I think that was around the time there was like a an inside star citizen episode and the team came out and kind of said this is our initial we're, we're, we're taking every ship we're bringing them back to their basic balance and we're starting over with like the combat balancing and all that stuff I remember that. That was um, that did push a lot of people to start getting into fighting more seriously. Let's start with with that kind of from a baseline of of the talk today. So around that same time, um, there was also a an effort to slow down speeds. I think there was a feature in one of the patches that said um, uh, high speed combat is going to be different. Missiles might be more, you know, or, or less. Um, they might not track as well and things like that. That also is kind of in the same energy as what Master Mode seems to be, right? Yeah. Uh, is that for me? Or is yeah, that yeah, for that's me? for yeah, you, for, Yogi. For... Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, but like, uh, it didn't work. <laughs> right. So I wanted to ask about <laughs> like, that. We tried, we tried like a couple, like, like I remember this thing, like it's, it's, my memory is a little bit hazy on this, but, but we definitely tried a couple of things to make, to encourage players to, to slow down. Right, we we uh, we tried to, I mean, not publicly, but we tried to uh, change. I think like fire rates or, or 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 spread or something like that. We changed the lock on times for missiles and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. ultimately, um, players just still like the the benefit you you're getting from just like <laughs> putting the pedal to the metal and just like and just fly fly fast uh basically compensated for any kind of like debuff you could possibly get so we never we'd never encouraged or we, we we were never able to encourage people to actually fly close to each other and get this um 
flying away so that they can actually see uh, see the spaceships. It was always like always jousting, um, mm -hmm. and this was not like interesting for us, which is why we later basically went to the, we got to enforce the lower speeds. So master mode. Uh, I want to push. Oh, hold up, hold up. I want to push yeah. back on that just a little bit. And I love Yogi, right? You are correct. <laughs> like jousting is like it happened like the speeds and stuff. But I just want to say that it it was still possible to tune that model and for the speeds to be adjusted to some degree so that the fights could get closer. But the geometry that you had in that model worked actually really good. It's just that so many people never, I guess you could say, got to the skill set where they could actually get to that point. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So the result was people <laughs> skating by at ludicrous speed. But, um, you know, one of the options with that my flight, like that flight model is it still had, in my opinion, it still had slightly closer fights once you get to the point where you can manipulate your ship and control it, right? Because of the way the box system worked. Um, but anyway, that's... Well, so I think it's... Some, there. I, think, I think a lot of people who are now playing the game probably didn't even know that you guys were trying to do more natural things to slow down combat. And I, it's, I think it's important to communicate to folks that this is something that was allowed to be done via player skill and player control uh, but ultimately it seems like you guys are going for something a little more artificial because the game simply isn't moving in the direction you need it to fast enough is that accurate that is that is accurate yeah i mean like the the thing with the with the player skill uh and the and the speed is i, I mean a1 is right like when when you really really know how to do these things then it can feel great but you are, you always have the problem is that two players that want to fight against each other, they need to fight or, or need to commit to that style of fighting. Uh, at any time, any player can just like, you know what, I don't want to fight with you, bye, I'm going, right? And there was almost nothing you could do to force the people to stay in that fight. And then the amount of training a normal, let's say, let's say a casual player comes to Star Citizen, right? And starts investing in this, in this and so on. It is very hard to teach that player what they need to do in, in order to become competitive. Which then leads to the problem we we have right now is that although I'm really invested in PvP combat in terms of like I want Star Citizen to succeed as a PvP game, but we don't have a lot of PvP players at the moment. Like a lot of like there's there's just not a lot of players interested in that because the the entry level for that is so freaking high, and that and uh, it is a little bit more exaggerated with the with the difference between you know um, HOTAS versus uh, MKB controls and so on because. If you have a keyboard and you want to go forward or backwards or to the sides and so on, you you just have a digital input, right? There's no there's no fine tuning in between. Um, so so sure, like you you can, you might want to have this this high skill area of of playing the game there, but if if nobody can actually learn it fast enough to actually enjoy it and not become better uh, or, or can't become better, then we failed as designers, right? And um, that is the problem that we're currently trying to fix. So the main goal yeah, is no, I, lowering I the skill floor. No, you want to raise the skill floor. Or yeah, right? raise it. Be, no, because you want no, no, it. You want no, 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 no. You want you want to you want to <laughs> you want to lower the skill floor so that you have an easier access into that. Sorry. Yes. So when I conceptualize it, I'm saying you want to raise people up to a point where they can get to that level where it's like yeah. you get eighty percent of the game in the first couple hours, and then that last twenty percent gets you the next ten years. That's kind of yeah. the, you know what I mean? So it's like easy to pick up. It's There's less knowledge barriers because like who knows about tricording? Who knows about, it's just not something that yeah. people will pick up, right? Um, yes. But get to that point where people can get in, it's, which is what I've I've been saying uh, for years. And when you came out with the master mode stuff, I'm like, this is good. And I still believe that. I think fundamentally master modes makes all the sense in the world, right? We just have to get to a tuning where the existence of uh, scale expression can be, can flourish and also give a place where like a rookie pilot is not going to walk into a meat grinder and be like, I'm not doing this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not just flight mode. There's also things like, like matchmaking. We don't have effective matchmaking for like competitive things and so on. Uh, but yeah, at the moment, if you, <laughs> if you jump into, if you jump into a PVP AC mode at the moment and what do you see? Yeah, fine. You see, you see, you come into this area full of sweaters, right? You're like, let's do this, and then you die, right? <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Well, I want to I want to interject because I will get back to kind of uh, master modes and where it's <laughs> headed. But I want to interject about PvP because that's 
obviously a big part of this conversation, but uh, like you said, the majority of players aren't really that concerned with it. Um, is is PvP something that be. you guys see as being a big part of the game, something that people should focus on, or kind of just something that can happen as far as moving okay. forward? Okay, so from the from the design directive I got, right, and I say this as the person who's currently uh, responsible for space combat, uh, the directive that I got is uh, this is a PvE game that allows PvP, not the other way around. Um, which means, like, there's this question whether like the the changes that we're doing are foremost aimed at making the whole game better for basically all players that want to enjoy combat versus uh, just making things for PvP better. And this is also the reason why we're currently having master modes in that kind of state, uh, right? So I do agree. Like the one v ones, for example. Like I mean, the one v ones were like called out as oh they're lame. They're uh, kind of like you feel locked in. Yeah, I agree with that. Right? That's 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 <laughs> that's true. Right? But the changes, the other changes we did were. <clears throat> they were still better for the overall game. So um, we do hope that we can focus a little bit more or tweak the game a little bit more so that it allows more PvP in the future or has more more interesting depth, right? Uh, but we won't get there in 3-2-3. Uh, in three three. Um, so yeah, later in the game, I mean, uh, which Tyra said this uh, <laughs> as uh, in the threat uh, inspector where I, where I was... Uh, I mean, in, in, in this one SC, uh, uh, ISC, I said, oh, it's a great space combat game. It was like, oh, it's not a space combat game. Star Citizen is more. Yes, I agree. So um, Taras <laughs> uh, mentioned that there will be areas where you are, which are more PvE and PvP dominated. Um, so PvP will definitely be and stay a part of Star Citizen. I think at the moment, it's more like, what do we do first, right? And at the moment, we have so much data to update. It's like, I, I cannot, at, at the moment, I cannot even say when, when we're considered PvP, like fully PvP ready. And there's actually a couple of things that we would probably do different. If Star Citizen would be a pure PvP game, we would probably not have gimbals or something like that. There's a couple of things where we would need to be very careful how we how we lay out and balance, balance ships. For example, we have our, our ships like light fighters, they have vastly different um, uh, uh, gun options, right? Some Some have like I don't know, like three size three laser repeaters. Other have two size one, four size four, or, or four size one, or whatever, right? Like these, the um, these uh, gun loadouts, they were not necessarily um, created from a balance point of view, but also from an artistic direction that we wanted this ship to achieve, right? But at the same time, this can be very hard to balance, right? But there's like there's often multiple requirements coming in why we need this or that ship. And not all of them are coined towards, it needs to work perfectly for PvP. I mean, we're trying to do as best as we can uh, to make it, to tune it in a way so that it feels um, balanced. Um, but uh, it's not the overall goal, uh, overarching goal to make a perfect PvP game. Like, it's like, Star Citizen is a PvE game that allows PvP, not vice versa. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just say something real quick? Uh, so, have you ever played a game called EVE Online, Yogi? Mm. Oh, yeah. Game. Oh yeah, Do, it's it's you... this is a really <laughs> small independent title, right? No, I, I I did play Eve Online. I did not play it for long though, because although I like the universe and all that, uh, it's not my type of game. Uh, I want to be in control of the spaceship. I don't want to uh, just give commands. Look, I, I am you are speaking my language because that's why I left Eve Online because Star Citizen let me control my <laughs> ship, right? Okay. So, would you say that Eve Online is a PvP or PVE game? I okay, so that is. I don't want to reply to that specifically because I don't have enough hours, especially not PvP hours in EVE Online to feel uh, safe enough to to answer that. But from my understanding, it is a big, like, it just allows both at the same time. Like, you have, like, big wars between factions going on. At the same time, uh, you can also enjoy a more curated content uh, when you play alone or so. So, yeah, it, it allows so both. But I think overall... With all the stuff that comes on with the player-driven economies and all that, I would mm. say it's more PvP. Yeah, so I agree. Um, EVE Online, in my opinion, it uh, there's a lot of lessons that EVE did really well that Star Citizen, in a certain kind of way, is starting to also do. I mean, we talked about when the um, player-owned st uh, stations and bases, they were talking about the, the settlements, right? They're like, you can go into the really high-risk area and have high reward, or you can have yeah. medium or low risk, and it's not as much yield, that kind of stuff. I mean, that is directly ripped from EVE Online's security status system, which works really well. It's like you got 
players of the you know players in this area that are very safe but they don't really get a lot of money and players in the really 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 dangerous areas where you're going to find a lot of pvp over here right um the idea of it's either a pve game that does this or it's a pvp game that allows for this i know i have full confidence that you yogi have the skill set knowledge and temperament to actually get the game to the right place but i think in a weird kind of way the conceptualization of it's either this or that is wrong because if you have a pve game that allows for pvp the pve con like the pvp balance and content will suffer in some way and vice versa if you do strictly pvp the pve content will suffer in some way so the idea should be out the door and it should be much more based on if you have a game that's designed from the ground up that is making sense for pvp pve you can take games like star wars squadrons which is strictly pvp but yet the single player campaign is accessible to many people I've only heard really positive reviews on people just playing the like the the campaign side of it and being like this is great. But that entire met like the entire system was based around great PvP gameplay that also ends up being great PvE gameplay. So, you know, when we talk about master modes and the tuning and the ships, speeds, weapons, this, that, and the other, a great PvP experience, ironically enough, will also equate to a great PvE experience, in my opinion. Because we've seen that happen time and time again. And we have real examples of games like EVE Online, which are mostly PvE with tons of PvP. And, you know, to me, it's just, I feel like in a certain kind of way, like you've been hamstrung, I guess, in a weird kind of way, because they're like, we want the game to be PvE. I agree, we got to bring the skill level down in a sense so that people can access it, but without sacrificing that zone where it, it really matters, because that's what's going to keep people locked in for that long term kind of gameplay. Okay, so I understand the worries there, but um, the whole tuning stuff that we did, that we did in three, two, two, one, for example, right? This was all based around PvP. The reason, um, so because I do agree, like if you have a good PvP experience first, it is easier. Like PvE is always easier than uh, PvP uh, in, in terms of balance because. If there's something in PvE and, I don't know, you fight alone against them, right? Some designers might say, okay, you're in a Gladius and you're fighting five Hammerheads. That's not a problem that's really hard to solve, right? Like, we can use damage modifiers, we can just make a, I don't know, accidentally, like, the ships running into each other to make it easier and so on. So I do agree, <laughs> right? That is that is easier. Um, <clears throat> but when I when I said we're, we're doing a PvE game that allows PvP, I don't necessarily, like, there's still a couple of decisions in there that... Um, we would simply not do uh, otherwise. As I said, like gimbals is one thing, right? Because right now we have this thing that we that we have gimbals and we're not really using it anymore in in, in fighters, for example, to automatically track the target and and, and and hit something where like when you you can manually gimbal them if you want to, but you have this uh, you have this um slower uh, lower fire rate. Um you can use a precision targeting mode, which is basically not very useful in dogfighting because you'll never be so close and, and so stable on target that the auto gimbling will actually make make the enemies hit. Um, <clears throat> I forgot where I was going with this point. Hang on. Um, I'll find it in a sec. But overall, um, when I talked about we're doing PvE now and later PvP, this is... Don't understand this as a as a general. Oh, we're making this. We're making a pure PVE game. No, no. The game itself, the mechanics, the combat dynamics, and so on. They need to they need to work in a systemic way, right? We know what the hammerhead should be good and bad at. We we know what a the medium and heavy fighter should be good and bad at. Or we're trying at least to. <laughs> I mean, some stuff just naturally evolves, right? But yeah. but we roughly know what our goal times are. Um, <clears throat> but when I talk about um, putting focus on PvP, PvP, on PvE. So specifically in this case, that means the one we want, for example, right? I, we simply currently do not have time to invest a lot of, of, in, of time or, yeah, basically it's time and money because like my work time is basically, is basically money, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have, we cannot invest a lot currently in the one we want if I know that the majority of the uh, combat, um, uh, combat players are not PvP players at the moment. So this is why we're focusing on other things. If if we had actually the dominant uh, goal to make PvP good right now, we would invest in Jerk. We would invest in uh, you know in, in a 
creating different or trying out different different models. I mean, you you, you yourself, you had the uh, your big propo uh, uh, proponent of like make it faster, right? I don't necessarily agree with this because, um, but it doesn't mean that the overall thing you want to achieve, meaning hope probably something like I want to be evasive, right? In a, in, in a light fighter, this can also be can be achieved in other ways. But currently, we don't have the time to actually deep dive into these problems. Will it happen? I'm pretty sure it will. Like um, just on my on my schedule, there's a lot of time scheduled out for IFCS where we, we just will try to get behind that that ball. But um, <clears throat> overall, it just like for three to three, we will not have like we'll probably ship with what we have right now in master modes. It, the fights and one v ones will still be locked in. Squad and battles will still be a lot better than they were before. Yeah, I, um, look, I, it was a long-winded answer for a short question, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. I, I like you going long-winded, man. It's, it's context is important, right? Um, now I will say that in my own defense, um, personally for me, obviously I'm like I, I'd like to see higher SCM speeds, not higher boost speeds. Um, you know, because yeah, I feel yeah. like the ship natively by default, because of the way the gunnery system is going on right now. Um, you know, it's basically suppressing a lot of depth of movement because your SCM bubble is only so big. You can't create enough deflection meaningfully enough because the weapon's speeds and spreads are yeah. so high that you just can't do. So either increase the speed so I can create more deflections and move around that space, um, which to me felt feels really good because I know the live model, if you brought it down to 500, we all kind of in the PvP community were like, this feels great, like with the settings and tunings and stuff. But it's, yeah. you know, the more thought I've given it, the more time I've been sitting with it, the more I play Master Modes, and the more I've spoken to other members, uh, what I find is it's the ratio, not really the speed. So if you want 220, right? Let's say 220 is the kind of target zone. It's the speed you want to keep the fights in the general area, yada, yada, yada. Then it's the ratio between weapon speeds and, and ships, right? You remember the Tachyon guns we had back in the day when the Banner Defender Oh, yeah. Came? Oh, yeah. The what, were the guns, yeah. what were the Tachyon guns? It was like the um oh you mean the um yeah what were they the banner was a hit scan right they were hit scan yeah right? well, what... yeah these were these were big balance offenders for us because when you're <laughs> when you're, when you're out from a target if you have a, <laughs> no no seriously like these guns are, uh, are, are a problem for us because the uh, the majority of the of the combat gameplay resolves around maneuvering around each other now if you're further away mm -hmm. you'd have less a rotation of, oh what the my horn is stealth horn you know. <laughs> it's the okay, ghost right. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so the further you're away, the more, the smaller your your angular uh, rotation requirements become, right? And the uh, the the singe weapon, singes, right? The singe weapons, they were uh, they were high damage, high speed, and the <laughs> and the uh, they were bad at uh, the fire rate, which made absolutely which which is like no difference because you're it, it makes no difference. No, meters, yeah, it makes it even so, worse because when you when you want to be on target, it's about like it's about how you can maneuver to actually keep your your nose up or your nose on the pips, right? But this is like this is actually an internal, um, like not an official, but this is a value for us. Like how much work do I need to put in to actually bring my gun on target? And snap hit scan weapons basically have no work because you just need to be on target for for brief small amount of a second, right? And then you click and you get the kill. So they're much easier to use than 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 other guns. Okay, these were the cinch weapons. Okay, keep going. Sorry, I didn't okay, want to so, interrupt you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Context is key. So uh, the singes back in the day suppressed movement because no matter what you did, it didn't meaningfully avoid damage, right? Yeah. And you know, regardless of the distance you're engaging at, it only depended on what your maximum range is, right? And these two yeah. things in tandem were balance breakers in the sense that it made the gameplay feel bad because mm -hmm. no matter what you did, as long as they were within range, it's like, well, I guess I'm getting hit now, right? And so then, it, it, then the game changed from being a flight combat game, like what we're trying to design, to being, well, I have these singes and this shield. So it's now the EVE Online kind of thing, right? And my argument's kind of been right now with the current tuning of 323 is it, it kind of feels the same in a sense that a lot of the movement has been suppressed so dramatically, especially in atmosphere. Now, I guess there's no control surfaces, so we'll kind of leave that for later. But, you know, it's if the gunnery has become so oppressive to the movement of the ships, yeah. If I bank left, like as a fighter pilot, like I want to have choices, whether I'm in a medium fighter, a heavy fighter, light fighter, snub, doesn't matter. If mm -hmm. I'm engaging a target and I'm looking at him, I'm looking at his relative movement. I'm like, okay, I should be able to move here to avoid fire. I should be able to move here, here are my options. If I go left, right, up, down, it doesn't matter 
because he's just going to nose on attract me, right? And so, you know, a lot of guys in the PvP community, including myself, have kind of been like, hmm, like there's small things that we could adjust now, like, you know, weapon ranges and, and you know, cone sizes, that kind of stuff, and, you know, um, velocity on projectiles. And it's, you know, the more I gave it thought, the more I thought to myself, I think the problem is the gunnery system in Star Citizen entirely. Do you feel like the gunnery system in Star Citizen is in a good spot? And if you could change it, would you? Uh, okay. Um, <clears throat> what I don't like about the gunnery system in general is that we have an absolute free form of how many guns actually attach to a ship. Like we're trying to to balance this out, for example, with the capacitors, right? Um, the alpha damage of if 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 you if your ship has even if it has lower lower sized guns but have many has many of them, it means like your initial alpha that you get to push out is hurting more than a ship that basically has bigger sized guns but only has two of them, right? Mm -hmm. So that is that is a mathematical problem that's hard to it's not even a mathematical problem. It's, it's it's just a problem that's hard to hard to fix. What we're gonna do for that kind of stuff is though that we're like the different shields that we have, they, they're gonna be, they're gonna have like values which make them more or less resistance against certain, and uh, against the the alpha damage that comes through. For example, the typical problem that is often quoted to me: Oh wait, I'm sitting in my in my Avenger, in my Gladius. I have laser repeaters. Now I have a range of four kilometers. Like they have no damage fall off and so on. So mm -hmm. I can pepper a, a constellation from eight from miles away and keep the shield in regen. That mm -hmm. specifically won't happen in the future, right? If you if you if you pepper a constellation or or, or any any other size uh, uh, shield with uh, sorry a ship with si size sh three shield generators, mm -hmm. then the shield generators will basically not necessarily shrug it off, but they will not go and go into this uh, high region delay. So the amount of um, delay that you get on uh, impacting shields and so on will be dependent on the alpha damage that comes in. So that gets a little bit around that, right? Because this has nothing to directly to do with the gunnery system, but it kind of has because it has to do with uh, with uh, with damage, uh, damage application. Um, so, so, but still, sorry. So, just real quick, just so I can understand okay. that. So, how is that problem going to get fixed? Because that's sometimes what I sit around and think about. It's like, okay, so did you see the hammerhead video I put out? I know we talked about it in DM chat, and I remember again. Other CIG devs, have, CIG devs have commented on this saying, well, this will be fixed because the armor system will come in. And, and my whole thing has always been like, like it's a geometric problem rather than like an armor problem, right? So yeah, you can put shield regen to a million. It, it, that, it just, the limiting factor for me is now I just need to bring a few more fighters because if I can hit you and you can't hit me, then it's a moot point whether you have a million points of armor or not. So it, in regards to that situation, how are we going to fix that? Like, how are you going to approach that problem? Is the question. I just, I just explained it. Like, the thing is, like, like the, the thing that I want to achieve in the gunnery system is mostly that I want the choice of weapons that you bring with you to matter. Like, the proper way to bring down a big hammerhead is not to attack it with fighters. Um, if you bring fighters, you have to bring a lot of them. But this will not be like. The way where I would like this to be is that the numbers actually matter, right? Like at the moment, if you go with one constellation or one hammerhead against a single fighter and the single fighter actually gets in range of the hammerhead, I want that fighter to die like very, very quickly. So mm -hmm. it's just not a valid target. It's like similar with like, you know, air defense turrets or something like that. If you go into an area that is bes bespoke created for killing, uh, for, for killing fighters, the fighters should suffer. And this is also the direction I got from above, by the way, right? Like we want ships like large ships and capital ships we want these things to be to be actual problems that players have to solve but there's not like a one one to one relationship there right if you want to bring down a hammerhead the the choices that i would like to see is like let's let's ignore the current balance and uh, mm -hmm. even the current 3 2 to 1 state right you need to overwhelm the defenses not necessarily by um by uh firing at it, but just to give turrets a harder target and allowing your other fighters to get close enough so that they can use anti-material cannons, which is basically our version of like low velocity, high punch um, in ballistics so that you can actually punch through the, through the hull and actually damage those, those turrets. So, um, I mean, this is why we also showed that case on the Citizen Con demo, right? Like, because it's, it's, a, it's the use case which we're trying to go for. Um, so that you basically have to bring lots of ships with properly equipped 
and you have to get into the effective fire range of a of the turrets of the hammerhead to actually make damage. See, there it is. Get into you know, the effective fire range of the turrets, yeah. right? Because how it's always been um, is this issue where even if my guns are smaller, you know, again, it's the whole if I can hit you, you can't hit me. So yeah, basically, you're going to get into a place, hopefully, or tune it so that, you know, I mean, I think the answer is for fighters is to just reduce the weapon range so that they have to get within effective range of a hammerhead to engage yeah, and i feel like that would make gameplay for fighters feel a lot better because uh, uh, you're basing into... you're basing your your experience currently on 3221 right on the right uh, correct okay so yeah. um just to be just to be clear on on that but we never but... we never said it anywhere right but the the current weapon tuning we have in 3221 is not necessarily the one that you see later in fact we only added the hammerhead in there and the constellation and the p50 p52 i think p52 yeah just to just to basically it was a try let's throw it in and see what happens i <laughs> absolutely expected that the peppering problem for example will not go away right because the a couple of other changes are missing um concerning the weapon ranges so the reason why why i am a little bit resistant to to decrease them so right now i will agree the weapon range is a little bit too high especially on some ballistics right to fire them and you see the, the trail just goes for on forever and you're like Okay, that was seven seconds. What the hell? It's still there, right? <laughs> so I do agree. Like we can bring them down. We can also we also have the option to add um, um, to add a weapon fall off, so that we can encourage fighters to get closer, right? What we also have in the new gunnery system, which is not enabled, or that part at least is not in not in um, not enabled in three two two one. We can actually make just because a weapon is mounted on a turret. Um, Make the weapon stronger. It's actually based on the on the gimbal mode itself. So when you um, because the new gimbal mode system is like internally it has uh, so the things like fixed and auto and manual and all that. These are all internal gimbal modes. But we now have like separate gimbal modes for remote turrets as well and for and for manned turrets. So we can just make weapons which are mounted on on turrets just just bigger. We can just like up the, the lifetime. We can make their projectiles faster. Do so we that, have lore for that? that? All works. So you're changing the ratio so have... between turret. I said, do we have lore right. for that? <laughs> so the, the, the thing with right. lore is <laughs> the thing the thing with lore is if we if we change something and we need lore to uh, to explain that they will find a way. They'll figure it out. Um, yeah. <laughs> right now, no. right now we're not we're not basing a game the gameplay on the lore. Um, I mean, sometimes maybe yes, but but it it, it needs to like it, it needs to fit in the whole systemic solution of of yeah. flight and combat right mm. so um and so, you can easily explain it you could say hey this is a dedicated turret it has some really cool high pressure capacitors just that <laughs> flop flop the thing out faster so i mean like like we can we can we can make it up we, we can make it up whatever we want we can also good just old... create variations of these weapons which we can attach to turrets if we want to right so um, some good old nanotechnology okay so it's nanotechnology it's yeah so it sounds like, so it sounds like to me, and and I agree with this, and uh, you know, a lot of us in the PvP space have kind of felt the same way. It's like you need to force the, the nature of trade combat in a sense that if I'm in a turret, I'm gonna have range control issues on you because if you're in a fighter moving around me, right? Yeah. So we need to bring it to a place where each each party is now at risk of engaging each other, right? I, so, I would say yeah. actually the turret should almost always outrange any kind of like fighters that are coming in. Right, they should outrange it. So the only way to get away from the turret is to either get right up on it and make it harder for the turret to track you at close range because you're creating too many deflection angles, yeah, or because it's really close. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean very close, which is good. I mean, you want that yeah. kind of you want it up in your face, right? You see their eyes. So. Yeah. Now I agree <laughs> with this, and I've been arguing for this. It's like hammerheads should have higher velocity projectiles. Uh, I think some of the SIG guys tried it out on the on the Idris when you guys were doing the event. They increased the projection. The Idris has custom. The, the, the Idris has just custom weaponry. It's. Uh, I think the weapons mm -hmm. are a little bit faster, but these are at the moment it uses custom weapon records. I would like to go into uh, be in a situation where that is not necessary. We actually have the proper weapons on there and not just like buffed weapons. Uh, mm. But um, I mean, yeah, that's the difference. Yeah, because uh, you can tie it in really. the power plant, right? You have a bigger ship, bigger power plant. Yeah, yeah more sure. Power to your weapons, blah blah blah, right? Yeah. But the idea is the ratio is what's in question here. So you're going to adjust mm -hmm. it. So the ratio means that if I'm in a fighter and I'm engaging and I'm hitting you, then you can also hit me. 
right? Because we got to get away from yeah. this idea of I can hit you indefinitely forever and you can never hit me. And that's that's how we get the whole hammerhead phenomenon of forever kiting and blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, but but the other things know. which I mentioned before, they're also in addition to that, right? Like mm -hmm. if you just have a couple of fighters, especially with anti-fighter weapons, the hammerhead will say, oh, well, yeah. I mean, it's like similar if you... If you <laughs> If you have, I don't know, an M16 and you go to an Abrams tank and you shoot at it, the Abrams is like, <laughs> what are you doing? Okay. It's like, bro. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's, oh, it's similar, like a good case and like, like from flight sims, like uh, uh, DCS, you can, you can, you can attack a tank with your 20 millimeter and a Hornet with a tank, with a tank air. No, right. You can outrange it. I mean, the tank will probably not hit back because it doesn't have any effective weaponry, but sometimes that kind of stuff happens if you have like, you know, uh, an unequal. <laughs> set of like options that like you're, you're, look we, are, we agree on this like i i'm 100 percent. i i totally think it's the smart thing to do the ratio has to be adjusted and then obviously fighters that are in a i don't know why people have put me in this box saying like a1 wants light fighter meta to come back and blah 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 it's i've been always fighting for this you know what i mean i agree with this like you have an ecosystem right ships engage each other like if i'm going to take down a hammerhead i should genuinely without memeing around right be like, okay, we need two Ares. We need some ships designed to kill bigger stuff. Otherwise, what's the point of an Ares? You know? Yeah. Um, you know, so I know for me, I don't want to live in a future where I can take out four Buccaneers and run around and kill basically everything in the game. And it's just variations on how long it takes me to kill them. Um, yeah. You know, I, I want there to be a place where fighters have a role. It's like, you know, but I also think if you knock the shields down, you know, on these bigger ships and you're going in for runs, I still want to contribute to the fight, you know, and I know you were talking about precision mode and whatnot, um, you know, uh, going in and picking the turrets off manually, right? So if I'm in a fighter, I'm not going to do a lot of hull damage, but I can come in there and knock out its starboard turrets or whatever, right? Make it easier. Just your for presence me. there can also make a difference, right? If you, yeah. if, if you just present a different target that the turrets might need to attack, uh, this is also like a sensible way mm -hmm. to overwhelm your enemy but that so we fix fix the problem right so the mm -hmm. variations the ratios of weapon velocities and whatnot at forcing ship rolls i agree with this that's why i've always been a, a fan of master modes the gunnery itself though how much skill is it going to be necessary to execute on the actual using of the turret on the actual right. using of the equipment right because if you're using the turret that, turrets weapons okay. whatever right and so, because we have this PIP system, which basically tells you exactly where to shoot all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times pe people do these things called PIP chasing, right? Where they're not looking at the ships. They're not really actually gunning. Yeah. They're just, they're just, you know, well, there's a box. Po point knows that box, pull trigger, yeah. right? To me. Have we, can, is there, like, is this the gunnery system that we're staying with? I'm talking about the HUD elements and how it's functioning rather than the balance of the weapon tuning. I'm talking about what's being visually given to me as a gunner or as a pilot lag lead pip systems that kind of stuff is that sticking around or have we considered a different gunnery system to achieve the goals that cig wants with closer range gameplay more cinematic that kind of stuff i mean uh okay where do i start with that um in general the guns that are firing right they the bullets have a velocity they leave the barrel you cannot change them anymore right which means if they don't have infinite speed or close to infinite speed, let's say, I don't know, I mean, 3,000 meters per second is not infinite, but you know what I mean, right? Like, it's basically hit yeah. scan man. Um, then you need, to, you need to aim ahead of where you want to be, right? And this is, like, one of the most fun points that we have in our space combat system. I do agree with you. I don't think, well, in some regards, that this is not really optimal. The problem that, that I have um, with the current lay layout of the ships is, like, sometimes you have a ship with six hard points. If you're not an experienced player and you want the full, you know, control over it, you can put six different weapons on it. In, in the life model at the moment, because you only have two weapon velocities, that's fine. In the new gunnery system, you have six different pips then, right? Because if, you're, if your ship is pointing somewhere, you need to aim and shoot in the section of the space where you predict the enemy to eventually catch up with this thing. So... That is going to stay for me as a as a as a as a from a design perspective and so on. I find lead pips not very good. I think we should use leg pips, but just really only because you should. Hallelujah! Someone yeah, yeah, clip that. No, no, no. <laughs> but the reason is simple because if you fire at lead pips, then your whole your whole visual 
visual attention is on a point in space and you just overlay this overlay this with a crosshair if you if you're in leg pips you're actually painting the target you're looking at what the target does which is much better now we can talk about weapon tuning and so on but the problem with like having slow weapon velocities is that due to our cockpit design in certain <laughs> in certain areas you will not see where the where the ship is right like because if you have a small cockpit and so on and you go leg pips like sometimes leg <laughs> the <Merlin. pip> is <laughs> Honestly, M50 so as well, right? It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. It's like, hey, let's make a Formula One cockpit, but let's just ignore that the player or the pilot actually needs to look outside. So this, <laughs> this sometimes happens, right? But I mean, like uh, in terms of um, VET back then, we also made recommendations how the sh how the design of uh, ships should be, and future future ships are going to have at least an eight, you know, sixteen degree wide cone, where there's nothing in front of you, right? So you can yeah. actually see a little bit more of the world outside, right? But something like the M50, I mean, I mean, the M50 is not a combat ship. It doesn't matter that much. But in the M50, I cannot look outside. Even in the in the old Hornets, I cannot look outside because the the seat is really, really close in, right? But <clears throat> that aside, um, I do agree that like lag pips are more suitable. So now I think what you're what you're going up to is um, are you want to. Are you aiming towards for, towards aim assist mechanics or something like that? Is that what you want to go for? Oh, hold on, hold on. So, so. Mike, I, I want to understand, like I said, but you kind of answered it, like we are staying with the lag pip lead pit system, right? It's just, I under, as far as I understand it, from your perspective, tell me if I'm wrong here, you want higher velocity weapons so it reduces wiggle, right? Because higher velocity weapons are easier to track. So you and want high points. velocity weapons re relative yeah. to the speeds of the ships. So you want close range, mm -hmm. you want high velocity weapons, and you want low overall ship speeds. Now yeah. you can achieve all three of these things, but the problem is with the lag lead pip system, it just becomes, how do I say it this way? Like a, a game of chasing the little, the little dot, right? Yeah. Um, let me show you an example here, which you've probably seen before. Tell me if this comes through. It does. Did this come through? Okay. So yes. this is a gunnery system example. I'm not saying we go make Star Wars squadrons, right? But yeah. my speed's at 158. I have no lag pip, lead pip. I have a bore sight, like a typical gun system you'd see in typical World War yeah. II. I have high velocity projectiles and I have low relative mm -hmm. ship speeds. Yeah. But the reason why the gunnery feels good in this game is because I don't have a lag pip, lead pip. I actually have to get visual on my target before I even want to yes. do anything with it. And, and what happens you know, if you're on target? Well, so there's a little bit of fixed assist. You know, you have high velocity weapons. So the lead, yeah. the lead angle isn't so dramatic that... Yeah, you know, but you but can't. you have you have aim assist in there, and they will and they, they will fire at the lead pips of that. They will that Ex exactly, ship. but you don't have to visually show that to the pilot. Is what yeah. I'm saying, right? And yeah. you know, so this achieves. This is an example of something that achieves all the goals that it seems like Sig wants for the more cinematic experience. Like obviously, there's yeah, yeah. this guy's not. Very Why good. not want the choice of seeing the pips though? Well, the I mean, problem is with, if you see the pip. Here's the thing: if you see the pips. You're going to start engaging from dramatically longer distances because you're not looking at the target. You're just looking at the pip. But that's and again. Most people just look at the little dot, pull onto it, and fire, regardless of what's going on in front of them, because they don't care. Like they just see the little dot, they pull onto it, they pull the trigger, and they let the game figure it out. But to me, that sounds a bit like maintaining this idea of the player skill and knowledge still has to be there to help them be the most effective in combat. You still have to know what your combat ranges are. To some degree, but with dramatic, like, I mean, okay, so let me, let me give you this example then, right? So we talked about the singes and, and Yogi even said like, yeah, it wasn't really good. I mean, everyone who played back in the day when the weapons were basically hit scan, it was, we all kind of laughed because no matter what you did, you're just getting hit no matter what. We're still and watching my the argument, dogfighter, by the way. I don't know if you know. Sorry, I, I, I apologize. <laughs> I want to see your pretty face. Come back. <laughs> yeah, damn, I hear it. <laughs> oh, there's hey, it's Yogi again. What the oh, hell? no. You said pretty face. <laughs> <laughs> just... Change the name over there real quick. <laughs> so, you know, um, uh, I'm sorry, what was the question? My pretty face got... Oh, we were about, talking about uh, lead the pips. pips. And pips and whether or not we're yes. using pips or not. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, yes, you still have to know your ranges, right? But my argument is the ratio that we currently have, again, the ratio is changing, right? But this is an example of, of why yeah. I think there's been so much uproar, especially in the PvP side of things for, for the current tuning and why... A lot of newer players are like, this is great, you know, um, 
is the disparity between weapon velocity and range compared to ship speed. And because we have a lead yeah. pip, you just it, it just tells you, aim there, fire, right? Yeah. Whereas if you don't have that, you have to look, like, first of all, you have to see your target, like, visually, which means you're going to get closer anyway, uh, you know, and then you have to actually aim onto it yourself and look at your, like, fall of shot, which is what you'd expect in a World War II dogfighter, which Chris, I know a lot of times has been like, I want my World War II in space and this and that, and... Yeah, people are going to complain. Oh, where's my leap hips? It's 2945. Look, okay, I mean, just to, walked... just, just to stop you there, it's, uh, I'm, not, I'm not married to the idea of having a PIP system. I'm fine if we go without. In fact, like a lot of the UI changes that we did recently was to reduce PIPs. But at the moment, we do have still a lot of different weapon velocities. Um, and there's also things like, um, you know, if you are sitting in a ship that's being used to take down large ships. Let's say let's say the the Ares iron, right? So currently what we see internally is that you you would lose you would use the Ares Inferno for example to do run-ins with the Gatling because it basically has a pretty widespread and you want to have it concentrated on subsystem, right? You would go in with that fire. You would use the iron actually from a bigger distance, right? But you need to be able to predict where you where you have to shoot in order to hit the target from a from a long range because that that gun uh, in terms of projectile velocity, won't be won't be very um, won't be very uh, accurate, right? But yeah. we can easily tie that to something else. I do agree with you, for example, that uh, maybe if you have like a, a a gunnery system where where you want to make sure that you cannot just like spoo like at at, at the targets from miles away, we can easily like like do that. Like in in my or in our um, citizen con talk. I had this thing with the cone, right? And the size of the target and when it matches the cone of the, of the thing. Mm -hmm. We could, for example, show pips or actually calculate any kind of like pips or show visually the pips only when we're inside that range. That is no problem because then we have a relationship between what the spread of the gun is, how big the target is, right? Um, so I'm not, I'm not opposed to that at all. It's just like from what we have right now, the new gunnery system needed to support the current stars as an experience. What we're going to do with that in the future if we think we don't want pips, we just want to do the visual aiming thing. That's that's absolutely fine, right? Like I don't I don't necessarily say that's a bad idea. We could also maybe just have the pips just in precision mode or something like that. Like because mm. the precision targeting, for example, in an Ares, um, like the Ares doesn't mm -hmm. have a big, yeah, doesn't have like thinking. a big, yeah, yeah, doesn't have precision a gimbal to, pips. to, yeah, yeah. So that mm. that would be so that that is perfectly fine. That 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 works for me. Um, but this is also something. I, I, I like the idea, right? We can also like ramp up the aim assist or something like that based on distance. It's also all not, not a big problem. It's just like we didn't get there yet, right? Yeah, it sounds yeah, like so there's I'm... still it sounds like there's still a lot more work going into the gunnery and master modes <laughs> after 323, yeah. I mean yeah. the main thing for gunnery for 323 is that we're replacing the current um the current system that we have in the game right now. Like the thing that always annoyed me is Again, the Ares, right? You you put your target or you put your um, your crosshair on the pip, and at the target in front of you, and all the shots are passing it from the right uh, uh, <laughs> uh, to the right side because the pips in the legacy system they don't show you where you need to aim; they show you just where the where, where the perfect pip is. But the new gunnery system shows the pips in relation to where the weapon needs the pip to be. So basically, it reprojects it onto the crosshair. So when you now sit in an Ares and you have a target in front of you and you you align yourself with the pip, you will see that the pip is a little bit a move to the left of a target. And when you then overlay it with the crosser, you get a direct hit on, on your target. And the old gunnery system didn't do that. The old gunnery system also didn't uh, support things like gimbals on turrets, which the new one does. Um, because without gimbals on turrets, we cannot use precision targeting, right? Because precision targeting is basically the replacement for auto gimbals. So when you have your crosser and you paint somewhere where you want your, your your shots to hit like you need to you, all you need to do is you paint the target but the gunnery system will take the exact point where you're aiming at and then gimbal or lead the shots itself so it, basically if uh if a one isn't flying in a i don't know in an, in an arrow <laughs> going from left <laughs> to right on my screen and i and i follow him with my crosshair my gimbals will turn like point to the left or for, uh, uh, to the left and when they fire, they're trying to intercept the target, right? But in order to, to do that, you need you need gimbals, and turrets don't didn't have gimbals so far. So anyway, so that is like what the new aiming system is really about. This just gives a lot, lot more flexibility and also a lot of more um, 
more descriptive values for networking because there were, we had some really odd uh, odd cases where you would sit in a turret and the network like on your client you were in like you know your fixed turret mode on the network client on another machine it would say oh it's a fixed mode and then you suddenly have different aiming solutions and so on so new aiming system streamlines at all but it doesn't mean that the aiming system is done like we can absolutely go through through variations with like different tunings with different elements that we're showing actually i always like doing running tests where I just hide elements that players rely on it's really really fun <laughs> I want to turn back to uh, Master Modes to talk a little bit about how it was brought into the game. Um, it was originally developed for Squadron 42. That was guy, you guys kind of introduced it and has been brought over to other ships for Star Citizen. Honestly, faster than I thought it would be. I, I thought we were going to be waiting quite a while for all the ships to change over. But what kind of tweaks and changes in either the functionality or the design of Master Modes did you have to make when considering the difference between Squadron and, and Star Citizen? Okay, so the very first prototype of Master Modes was actually not in Squadrons. It was, uh, it was we developed this directly after we released 3.14 uh, because we were sure we wanted to reduce the speeds. But after that, the production for Squadron 42 really ramped up and they needed help with the flight system, which is why we did the rest of the development uh, in, in Squadron. Um, when, so at some point, we had the tuning in there, and the tuning was actually quite close to what we had in 3.20. Um, but when we, uh, when, when CR announced on the citizen con that removing all that stuff or that, uh, master modes and all these other features are not gated by the squadron release anymore, we then started moving this over. But at the same time, we were aware about the worries. Oh, this is a single player tech tech thing. It will never work a multiplayer. Right. So of course we had the same worries. Right. But this is also why we, why we then started to push out like the test environments in 320, 321 and 322 and specifically in 322, um, we did a lot of smaller tweaks. I mean, I don't know, like, A1, how many of these different uh, about three or four. releases did, did you play, right? Like, there was, like, like yeah, we did a lot of, of smaller smaller changes, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, some of these changes which we did in there, we were pretty sure, yeah, they're not going to work. Let's put them in anyways and see what the data says, right? Um, so in this regard, the current iteration of Master Modes is, uh, is more PvP-focused and is a little bit ahead of what we have in Squadrons. Um, but the tuning process is actually quite um, is quite intense. So when we changed the flight tunings for um, for three two to one, like we we basically said, like the the way how the squadron model had had become wasn't really suitable for what we wanted to envision. Because um, I mean, it's like I would agree with you, uh, A one. Like the uh, for example, the the over reliance on boost for certain maneuvers we found too Ooh. high. The uh, the squadron model, the initial one, had like on the Gladys, for example, had five Gs left and right, and you boost, you get 15, right? So it was enough to jump out of the way and be evasive, but it was always like, maybe, maybe it's a bit much, right? So that's <laughs> why, we, why, we, why we cut down the numbers, and the tests we did in 3, 2, 2, 1 were basically just based on modifiers. So the, the, um, because it, it needed to be fast, and we wanted to iterate faster with it. So we created a custom record for, uh, for that ship, then brought up our... Um, our, like we have a so-called vehicle inspector, uh, which we can bring up, which actually also like uh, PET can bring up in live builds. And it reads out the current tuning of the ship. So we know exactly from what ships, uh, from what ship, how many Gs uh, it can pull, because this is not data we actually set in the game data. This is a, a outcome of the potential of the thrusters against the mass of the ship, right? Um, and then we basically took these numbers and we're like, okay, let's just, Start from scratch. Gladius, let's say, I don't know, what is it, 13 Gs forward or something like that, 20 under boost. It's, 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 it's quite a yeah. lot. But one of the things we wanted to achieve there is that when you fly forward and then you turn around and go, go the other way, we wanted to have a faster reaction and not just drift forever backwards before you go forwards, right? That was like one of the, one of the yeah. decisions we made in this tuning. And um, from basically there, we, we, just, we just iterated and went on. So the Gladius, we at some point when we tested internally, we were reasonably happy and then adapted the tuning or basically moved the other ships in relation to that. But we used a non-proper tuning methodology there, which is more like, let's just change the modifiers of the existing ships, but it didn't change the tuning. The ships that are now getting tuned in for 323, three, they actually have proper tunings because a proper tuning means we're not changing modifiers, we're actually changing the thrusters. So, mm. um, and this is also like why the process for 323 three is actually quite, quite deep, right? We, um, because every single thruster 
needs to be or almost every single thruster needs to be adapted. Um, if you, for example, look at the layout of a, of a Gladius, has almost the same thrusters on, on like bottom and top and the, and, and the sides. So these they they have different uh, thrust um, capacities compared to uh, the three two two one uh, implementation. So, anyways, so how does that compare? Well, at the moment, the three two two one or three uh, SC, as a PU model is more ahead of uh, of what we have in squadrons. But we will, like whatever we end up in, in star system, we will likely port back to um, the squadrons at least for the ships that you can fly in squadron. Okay. Yeah, that's honestly the, the bit about the thrusters. All of that was kind of what I was imagining when you guys talked about moving all of it over to the Star Citizen ships. And when it was finally revealed you were wanting to get a first pass in for 323, I was like, whoa, that was that was fast. Yeah, well, it's um, it was bound to happen. The problem is if we um, if we don't enable the system, we just keep dragging legacy around. Sure. And yeah. we hate we hate that because it means like yeah. you need to it means you need to support two, two different tuning systems at the same time. This is why in three two three we're we're having the weapons in there, we're having a first pass of master modes in there. I guarantee you it's not the last one. Um there will be more actually. Um so there's always like opportunity to change a couple of things up. Whenever I hear legacy and star citizen, all I can think of is the use button. That thing was oh my gosh. The use button. So you don't like interaction mode or what? No, just the, <laughs> everything was used. <laughs> I didn't know what that meant, 3.0. Everything was used. Um, used thruster, yeah. All right, so you're, you're, you're getting all these ships over. Like you said, the thrusters are specific for, for their sort of application in the game. One of the biggest places where we're getting a lot of like questions and concern from are people who are flying industrial ships, larger ships, your Caterpillar, C2, uh, whatever it might yeah. be. They have a lot of concerns that they're not being as considered when it comes to master modes. Do you have, I think you talked about this on Star Citizen Live actually, but do you have comforting words for them that you guys have put a lot of thought and, and tested their situations as well? Don't worry. I mean, is all I can say. The thing is, um, so we have this uh, little, um, <laughs> okay, so everybody who listens to me, don't misquote me here now, right? <laughs> but between, <laughs> between Richard and out. me, we had an no, no, we had a disagreement what actually means industrial. From my point of view, right, because I'm focusing on space combat, there's no such thing as a combat ship, uh, as, as a non-combat ship, right, because all ships can be in combat. So we need to mm -hmm. be, we need to treat them fair, right? It's, 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 it's not like, hey, uh, you're flying a container ship and I'm coming here with my errors. I do put two, sh uh, two shots and you're blowing up or something like that. Of course mm -hmm. not, right? Like we need to make sure that the turrets and the defenses of these these ships actually give you enough to work with. Um, remember earlier when I said that these, these size three shield generators, there will be very resistance to like fire from anti-fighter anti weaponry, right? That is part of the equation here, right? Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. The, the current flight tuning that we did and although we're using like combat specific names, we're not specifically tuning ships for combat or non-combat. Sure, there are combat ships. The Gladius is a combat ship, right? It's a light fighter. But we're also using um, archetypes for non-combat ships. Um, or no, no, we're using our combat named archetypes for, for non-combat ships. An archetype for us is not a role description. Like when we're giving a ship a light fighter tuning, it doesn't mean it's every ship that gets this tuning is a light fighter. Um, for example, the M50, it currently has an interceptor tuning. Is the M50 interceptor? No, it's a freaking racing ship, right? But the properties are similar. We could have called these arch uh, archetypes also something like light fighter would be something, a light ship that can quickly change its velocity vector. It has a certain ring to it, or we could just call, call it light fighter. The Aurora, for example, internally like has a light, fight, light fighter bomber archetype. It doesn't mean the Aurora is a bomber. It just means the Aurora has a tuning that traits agility for durability. Got to make the Aurora a bomber um, for at least one update. Okay, I'm sure. Right sure. <laughs> just some, just put some armor every, on top and then <laughs> yeah. it's fine. Weld it on there. It's... Yeah. Um, so archetypes. Uh, yes. Ca can I, for my own mental sanity, get a little clarification on this? So sure. when we're talking archetypes here, obviously the interceptor archetype right now is doing very, very well. Obviously it's going to change. We're going to tune some stuff around. In your opinion, how much does the role and archetype of the ship affect whether or not it's a win-loss? So, for example, right now, 
right? Again, this is tuning will change, but for example, right now, the light fighter tuning, you know, if you take an interceptor and a light fighter, obviously the Buccaneer, you know, the Buccaneer, even as an interceptor is winning because of its current balance. But if I'm in a light fighter and he's in an interceptor or he's in a medium fighter and I'm a light fighter, if the advantage goes, like if I'm in a gladius fighting a hornet, the advantage goes towards in a, in a duel, the gladius. Is that going to make up a larger percentage of whether or not I'm going to win or lose compared to the flight player skill side, right? So if you have 100% points to win a fight, 50%, like in live, 90% of that calculation is based on whether or not you are a good pilot. 10% is based on your ship weapons type, all that stuff. I agree. That's, that's, not, that's, too, okay, that's I, too high. I would rather say it also has to do with the ship size and the profile and so on, right? Because I'll also the say... Model, there's no space for medium and heavy fighters. Except I'm for also going to say in live, uh, in, server in live, stability, yeah. anybody? In live, the meta is Hornets, which are mediums. Yeah, but the Hornet is currently buggy. Right, the Hornet well, I mean, has there's a, lot the, of there's a lot of buggies. No, 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 no. But but but, but seriously, like what happened to the Hornet yeah. is when the we, we had to update the um the way how thrust capacities are cal calculated because of the Fury because the Fury has this this the Fury has this gigantic like uh what's it called this uh, thrust vectoring thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it broke the Hornet, and we and we didn't notice, and then we were like, uh, we should fix it, and then we forgot to fix it. So the Hornet <laughs> is not resp the the Hornet is not representative of what it was supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be, so, but it is winning based on its current it tuning. Is, it right? is winning Just because it, it has too many Gs and too many weapons uh, for for how many Gs it has. Uh, that's yeah, the problem with this thing. It's super fast. Anyway, but the point is, yeah. How much of that calculation do you envision? is based on your skill as a pilot rather than the choice of ship. Because right now, Master Mode, it seems like the dominant calculation is based much more on the ship choice rather than, which is representative of like, you want a ships to be in roles. But if I'm in an Aurora, right? And I'm up against a average pilot, am I going to be able to defend myself against a Hornet? Because, you know what I mean? Like, you just pointed to pretty much the hardest problem we, we have to solve, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, the archetype tuning it's such, uh, it's essentially no. The archetype tuning is just a it's just a starting point where we where we envision how the ship is supposed to fly and feel. Well, not even feel, right? But how the general properties where the general properties where we where we're starting. Let's talk the tuning process for the for the Gladius, right? So the Gladius has like has like the G's we just set them up, right? We said, oh, you know what? We started at like A to the sides, but and eventually we now have like a more spheric or circular things for the strafe and pretty pretty decent uh, forward uh, acceleration. Um, now, the thing with the Gladius is it has a, a, a very different pitch yaw rate, right? So it has 70, I think 70 on pitch and 45 on yaw. That's a huge difference, right? So that is not the archetype tuning for that ship, right? The archetype tuning is rather, um, so if you take 70 plus, like we have like a an overall um, attitude change degree of freedom thing. So let's say 122 degrees, and then some fighters might might make it like, oh, let's split that that thing 60 60. The Gladius does it with uh, 70 45, right? It means the Gladius is harder to control because you need to roll to get the advantage of actually using the complete pitch rate, right? Mm -hmm. So, but that is just specific to that ship. Other ships that are also light fighters might do it differently. So there's like and some some so these properties. Are, are a value of the ship. Also, there are things which are really hard to control with tuning. For example, the the um, the overall shape, the, the Gladius or the uh, the M50, right? If it looks at you, it's kind of like very small, and you cannot really <laughs> hit it, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, what's what's the name of the uh, of the alien ship that basically from the front just looks like a big yeah you know, the car to all right? It is so easy to hit, right? Right. So, yeah. and of course. And of course, the Cartwheel has a, has an archetype, and there's another ship with a similar archetype. But of course, these ships they fly completely different to each other, right? So I would not necessarily put the um, the archetype as a as a thing that basically tells you how are you sex how successful are you going to be with it. What I would like to reach in the future at some point, and we're not there yet, and we're still a while out from that, is that every ship has its has its like properties, and if you want to fly the ship to the to the maximum performance. You have to learn the ship itself. You have to learn about the flight dynamics. You have to learn learn later about how how the jerk reacts and so on, right? You have to you have to learn how the rotation rates can be uh, can be taken. Maybe you maybe there's a thing how how fast boost boost spools up or so. There's but there's a couple of things 
which we would like to add at some point that make sure that that we get to that kind of like deep gameplay so that you just don't like like so you th so that you have to learn more about the ship so when you ask me now should the archetype to be defined or or defined if you are successful in that ship i would say not necessarily um, of course there's a couple of like let's say uh obvious things i would like to be in a situation again if you fight against a heavy fighter and you f uh, fly a very light fighter that you have a good chance right at the moment you don't because the heavy fighters will just go backwards and um, decrease then the angular the angular requirements to get the nose on you and then you're basically <laughs> are on the receiving oh, end hold, hold on, hold of hold these hold massive hold. guns right so that's not true though that's not true because that might be what your data is showing, but that's not what's happening. You take any great pilot and they're going to 1v1 a hammer, like a Vanguard, not in master modes, not a chance, not a chance. Like not a single person AVS is going to win a duel against me if I'm in a Gladius and they're in a Vanguard. So okay. the stats you're getting, I don't think are accurate because what's happening is like, especially in atmosphere, in atmosphere, you could, you could make that argument because everything is even more condensed down to lower yeah. speeds. Right. Um, you know, it, the, <laughs> <laughs> the vanguard regardless of back strafing or not like it, it it's not winning that fight it, like the gladius is going to get behind it it's going to just sit on i mean I've, I've done it on stream so many times i mean it's i'm never really afraid of vanguard pilots so the stats you're getting are vanguards getting kills on people who are either not paying attention two still learning the system obviously for for obvious reasons or three getting in a group together in atmosphere and just primary one guy at a time and just shooting them right so okay. If you're gonna make an like, if you're gonna make an archetype and and change the tuning, it's like this is sometimes what what makes me worried is I know you know you know, but if you're going just based on the stats, you're not gonna get the result you're looking for. Like the Vanguard will still lose, and once once the game starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger, and guys like me go out and teach people like, oh by the way guys, this is how you do it. That small one percent of people that are doing it a certain way is going to grow, 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 because everyone's going to know. Oh, how to beat a vanguard is you do this, this, and this. Get behind them, and you're good to go. Okay. You know. So that's. So um, I. I'm are not you trying saying, to be an asshole, but it's I, just. Are you saying no, no, no? Are you saying that is actually working at the moment that you actually have a higher chance on a light fighter against the heavy yes, fighter? Yes, absolutely. Okay, that's 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 good then. I mean, it's not necessarily what what is reported to me, right? But mm -hmm. but still. But the decision is not being done by the archetype we're using. In fact, what we won't be doing in the future probably is we will not make public which ship is into which archetype because the archetype is just a base tuning. It doesn't mean that the specific tuning of a ship is respecting that archetype. There's a couple of ships which don't fit in fit into these categories. The Catalyst doesn't fit in there, for example. <laughs> the um, the uh, the Zaber does not re really fit into there. Um, there's other ships as well. Uh, some ships, for example, has, have very low weapons. So the, the races, for example, right? Um, so the tuning is just a starting, uh, sorry, the, the archetype is just a starting point. It does not define what the thing eventually is going to be. If we, if we feel we want to make the error differently, then we just, we just do it differently. Um, the, the problem is then you will never really truly know how these ships perform unless you actually have actually players playing it for a while right like and, and and even like i'm not talking like one week i'm talking four weeks i'm talking six weeks or a core mm -hmm. or one or two releases even because some some like that was the interesting part of the three two two one tuning there were so many things we didn't predict like some we absolutely we absolutely pre uh, uh, predicted absolutely but but some stuff like how people would for example use the nav mode and all that and uh, to get in and out of combat like some of these things we just didn't didn't foresee correctly <laughs> yeah the nav so this is why <laughs> Nav sniping, yeah. There's so there's so many nice uh, term terminologies coming out of that as well, right? But but this is just the process, right? Like you you throw it out, you see what happens. If you're not or if you if you don't succeed or you're not happy with the results, then you tweak it. And that's like we're not we're not locking ourselves in anyways, right? If something needs to be tweaked, then we're we're tweaking it, whether um, whether it's based on recommendations of a streamer or a general feedback thread or something like that, like everything is like. Uh, That's why we're here. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, like everything is like up for uh, change if we if we want to go there. So, mm -hmm. but that's fine. I think that's the biggest so thing. With this. Can I it really low? So <laughs> the biggest thing with this update, something. I think, that you guys said on Star Citizen Live was that there, you're not tied to anything 
particularly there are things that are harder to move on but this is a first iteration on a system that's going to be changing quite a bit over the next time i assume a few years and we even had posited in, in some of the discussion notes that this might be something that's balancing for the next decade or two you know based on the health of the game there's there's not a single mmo out there that doesn't keep balancing um oh yeah this is the, this is the same for us and like honestly this is like really really hard because even the, well, they once just said, hey, I'll defeat all heavy fighters. So fine. This is like, this is not the the feedback I got so far, or maybe I didn't listen properly. It could also happen. Um, <laughs> but the um, but the overall uh, data or actually understanding what's going on, I mean, like, I'm, I'm not doing that. That's, that's a PT is creating or like a Bayer's team is creating that, that stuff for me. And they create recommendations and so on, right? But like sometimes understanding the data i mean sometimes we just have simple conflicts right like we say we see something the kdrs where people say the buccaneers are very overpowering then we're looking at the kdrs for the buccaneer and okay people don't die a lot in this in, in this ship but they're also not getting a lot of kills on this ship right so there's sometimes the question of what do we do with this information and that stuff is not very easy to decide what to do sometimes with that so um sometimes honestly it's just a step in the dark sometimes we're trying to make educated guesses on how to continue with this but uh, I mean, this is just part of the process. We will keep continuing to, or we will keep like changing the balance or tweaking the balance so that it's, uh, that it's like, um, so, so, so that it makes sense, right? That's what people are okay. expecting. <laughs> sure. I've got, um, I, I do want to start wrapping things up here, but I, I think it's going to be important for us to talk about where this is all leading. Um, obviously, you said that the point of master modes is sort of to slow down combat. That's something that you attempted before, but had to do be a little more heavy handed with it. Um, but there's also the very big elephant in the room, I think everyone notices is that capital ship gameplay is coming along. And this feels like a big turn towards preparing us for that kind of stuff. Um, was that a big was that a big part of of this a big um, in not influence, but like a uh, What's the word I'm thinking of? Goal. Yeah, like did that did, did capital ship gameplay coming in affect how master modes was developed a lot? Not really, no. I no. mean, like ultimately, the most ships we have in the verse are small ships, right? The the vast majority is. Yeah. Um, and getting like the small the small ship gameplay in a good state is basically then because most players have small ships, is then more important than getting the big big ships in the right space, but. Just to be clear, there is like, there is like certain expectations what ship big ships are supposed to be doing, um, so um, they will fit into into that scheme one way or another. Uh, we well, can talk about details, like for example, the hammerhead. Is it maybe a little bit too fast for the ship of the size? Maybe, but maybe it's also not not a problem that it is that that fast. But it's it's we'll have to see. There's like there's a lot of stuff coming with like capital ships. I mean, if you talk about true capital ships. These things are supposed to be really big challenges for players, and um, we actually need to work on these um, bigger loops on how to make this interesting. But then it also has to do with like resource network gameplay and so on, because while our small ship combat is mostly about, or we want this mostly to be about maneuvering, the large ship combat is supposed to be more like a naval style thing where you have to coordinate with turret gunners and... Right. Uh, focusing on weak points and and all that stuff giving them the right side of your uh of your <laughs> presenting the right cheek so to speak when you when you're supposed to getting damaged because like the, the back shield is maybe maybe higher up and there's more stuff to be to be done for example i don't think the current shield system is really suitable for capital ship combat because um because due to the way how how we're moving shield phases around and all that so that will uh, that will all need to be. There's more stuff to that, way more than just like the thing we're currently struggling still with, which is the um, the light fighter the light fighter combat. It seems like or oh, light small ship combat. Sorry, don't don't yeah. misquote me, please. Right? <laughs> the light fighter, the dreaded light Yogi fighter. Yogi wants light fighter, man. You got to hear first. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it seems like targeting, um, you know, the way that flight works, turrets, thrusters, all these things are kind of showing that players should expect a, a pretty different combat experience in a year or two because they're going to have light yeah. we're going to have small ships big ships turrets that are much more effective um even you know we haven't gotten into control surfaces and stuff like that but it, it seems like a lot is about to change for people yeah there is uh when exactly that will all, all release i don't know of course right yeah. but we have pretty big plans for uh, uh, 4.0 um and then we'll see how far we get with this but but there's like 
uh, Star Citizen has like like plans for the next decade. So um, as long as uh, we're successful or we have players that are interested in the game, we'll keep developing it. Wonderful. You mentioned armor earlier. Could we talk a little mm -hmm. bit about how armor is supposed to factor into this sort of equation um, of players getting away or, or, or maybe being in nav mode and not dying immediately? Players don't really... Oh, well, whatever. I let uh, A1 <laughs> reply whether or not they die, die immediately, but um, <laughs> in general, <laughs> maybe it's whether or not they, they die against you, right? But, um, or the but bomber uh, I cannot talk really about armor. So there's like this whole thing with Maelstrom, which is being developed, and uh, the new armor system will build on top of Maelstrom. But from at the moment, we don't, we don't have this yet. There's also a couple of things that we need to resolve first. Um, for example, um, uh, if parts of your sh uh, ship are being shot off, right, but they don't carry any critical parts, we still need to have ways to um, to slow down the the flight the flight maneuvering that you can do, right? Because just because you're cutting off some spoilers on your uh, M50 or so, it should not not necessarily mean that you're way faster now. Um, so there's a couple of things we need to we need to do. This um, there are plans how the whole gameplay interacts between between energy weapons and ballistics and, and so on. Um, but it's a little bit too early to talk about this. Um, we, we had some plan because the moving these ships to the new um, armor system will basically offset a lot of the balance again. Uh, so we were thinking about adding actually a, a in-between, like, like a simplified armor system. Um, actually, we actually have an armor system on the ships, but it is just a static damage modifier right now, which really, really annoys me. Um, like I, I had it in my backlog for ages. Oh, so just just prototype that, and then it's going to be fine. But um, the thing is, I'm usually overwhelmed with work, so it's like there's not a lot of time for these funny side projects. Um, but at the moment, for example, like 50% of your ballistic damage is just being detracted from you. And if we mm -hmm. if we remove this right now, it would mean that everybody would monoboat uh, ballistics, which is also a little bit besides the point at the moment. So um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you think it's going to dramatically affect the time to kill when the armor system is completed? Or think relatively the time to kill is kind of where it should be-ish? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. This is something we have to, to figure out with gameplay. Um, right now, I would say the uh, time to kill is a little bit too high in places. But then again, I, I would think that... So we have, for example, damage modifiers. We can do something like that... Um, like when you're in AC competitive mode or something like that, we could just up, up the damage by by three or so. Actually, <laughs> at some point, I, at some point, I ran an internal test, and it was basically damage times ten. That was insanely fun, like really fun, because you had this high 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 investment, high reward thing. However, that is absolutely not suitable for a for a game where you wake <laughs> up right, you get out of your bed, you're getting dressed, you run to the subway, you go to your <laughs> <laughs> to your uh, thing, then you see something which, which you want to buy in the store. This is usually happening in our gameplay test. Like, I cannot fly like that. I need new shoes, right? And then we're basically <laughs> first buying and equipping ourselves with some new, new armor and so on. And then you go to your ship and the first 35 minutes have passed, right? I mean, that, that kind of flow, right? You, you understand me. You don't want to then get up and just getting insta-killed, right? So yeah. we need to be very careful how we, how we do the balance there. But as I said, personally, I think like in, in competitive modes, we can we can get away with a with a with a, uh, a lower time to kill. But in the PU, we need to be very very careful, or at least add enough uh, dynamics in the game system so that that you have a lot of options when you're when you're under attack, so that you can escape or so. Uh, maybe we also need to educate players just to not go alone or I something a, like I that. A question here <laughs> regarding time to get kill. Get an so, escort. So yeah, get an escort. Really? Don't get me, don't get me started. Ask somebody. <laughs> Ask somebody. Get I've been literally twenty credits. And then... <laughs> I'm like, guys, just just hire a scout. Like, just hey, a scout. I need anyway, a beacon um, for it. Come on. So I agree. Lower time to kills are definitely a lot of fun. Do you think lower time to kills are easier for rookie players or harder for them? Because what I find from my experience is rookies have trouble getting on target, and when they finally do get on target with high time to kills, it's basically meaningless. Um, because a good pilot's going to be like, why is someone shoot? Oh, okay. Turn around. <laughs> right. Um, whereas if a rookie has a lower time to kill when they get on target and they do score a kill against a better pilot, they can actually do some meaningful damage. Um, I do agree if it's too low, then, you know, when you're going buying your shoes and it takes 20 minutes to get back in your ship, it could be a bit of a drag, you know, but you know, for me, 
and all the games I've ever played, all the space games and whatnot, like the time to kill around two, 2.5 seconds for like the lightest of the ships to me is like, if you're getting damage on target, it feels really good. You know, okay. um, obviously it's going to be higher for the heavier ships, but you know, and lower time to kill too. Like it, it would be more fun for turrets. I find too, because uh, again, it, if it's harder to get on target, but when you do get on target, you're rewarded for it. I feel like it's a way better place to put the game instead of, you know, 80% of your damage is kind of always hitting. And then, because then it becomes much more based on like numbers and it's much more of an MMO kind of feel, which may be what CIG wants to do no, with I, the game. I, but, no, 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 no. I, I, I do get I, you know? I, one thing I can say with sure, I hate it. Like, hate it when I fire <laughs> at something and the freaking number pops up. I hate this so much, right? This is why I, I love even you, hate. <laughs> so, so, but, 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 but this is just me because for me that just breaks immersion, right? Yeah. Um, it does. I like I like the feeling of having of not knowing what is actually happening. You know, there were some 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 first person shooters, right, with no hit markers, and you fired at somebody, and the and the enemy would knock would be knocked over, and they're falling behind the desk, right? And it's like. Is he dead? Or is he not dead? Yeah, so you like go there, and the guy, <laughs> and the guy is gone, right? I like that, right? I like that that you don't that you actually actually have to work with that kind of like imperfect knowledge what's going to happen because it also makes for a dis uh, interesting decision making. You cannot overdo it, of course, right? You need to have valid cues everywhere in the world so that you make so that you can actually make meaningful decision making. But not knowing everything should be part of the game as well. But where was it going with this? Oh yeah, so. It was about kill times, right? Time to kill. Repeat yeah. the question, man. Sorry. So time to kill for me was good around the two, two and a half right. second mark, right? And that if okay. for rookie, newer players, is it better for them? Because that's the thing is I want the game to be accessible and yeah. fun for rookies. Like if a rookie <laughs> gets a shot on me, he should kill me, right? Because with yeah. higher time to kills, we get into these issues where, you know, you're just never going to kill the, the, good, the good pilots. And it kind of feels bad where you get behind A1, you're like, oh, I got him. And then I'm just like, hello? So, turn around so yeah but this is like this is hard so i my answer to that is if you have a rookie or if you are if you have a rookie, if you are a rookie <laughs> focus first on pve and then go into pvp afterwards and don't find against a1 so are you saying just, train and become better I know, like like getting getting, getting used to the combat system should be like no no playing in pve should somewhat prepare you for PV, pvp but i do not expect somebody to be uh to get to the same level. In fact, there are a couple of strategies like that PvE, PvP players will do, right? Or that, I mean, in the live model they're doing right now, which I find really, really boring when you in PvP combat. For example, one of our uh, first iterations, so, so one of the iterations uh, from Diego's AI was about like, uh, he created the tuning for a uh, for an AI ship that was had basically the same capabilities as used, which means full rotation rate and so on. Uh, this was the thing that basically destroyed me because the an AI is always better at you than than uh, at, at rage control, right? And oh, yeah. I had no I had no, ch no chance at all. And when I had this guy on me, and the um um and it got, got into this nose to nose DPS race, the sucker started backstrafing. <laughs> I, I hate that too so much, right? So I do definitely like like I hate that so much, and I couldn't and and I couldn't like. Typical thing, I couldn't push, I couldn't get close, right? I couldn't couldn't encourage them to, to do something else, right? And that is, for example, behavior I would not would like to see in, in PvP, PvE combat because it just doesn't make for a good experience. Of course, that is a problem with the current flight model, right? And this is like one of the things which, you know, is on the to-do list to see if we can change it in some ways by using different, different velocity shapes or so, right? Um, but... I would still say that that like there are some strategies that PvP players will will use, and then if you start playing PvP, then you're probably gonna gonna learn these strategies anyways. Now, in terms of time to kill, um, honestly, that is something I don't have a clear clear answer on that. If you say 2.5 seconds are fine, then that's okay. I'll, we we can go with that. <laughs> um, it depends, of course, on the range, but I don't I don't have strong opinions on this anyways because the time to kill in the future is also going to be a little bit harder to uh, to calculate or to to calculate. We can make up like ideal numbers, but um, specifically with Maelstrom later, it where you basically <laughs> where every part of the ship is its own entity. Um, you're just gonna gonna or like and and, and the ships don't necessarily blow up directly, but you rather like uh, them, make them yeah. you cripple them, them right? Yeah. Yeah, disable them, and you, then you have these these uh, these debris flying around, or 
this half functional debris um, <laughs> that will actually probably change. Um, so I don't have a definitive answer to that. If 2.5 seconds feel fine, that's okay, cool. I'm fine if we have one second in, 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 in AC PVP environments. Um, although then then again, if you if you die because you were you were not not looking for 2.5 seconds somewhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, is that 2.5 seconds might to be, get through the might shield be too? Much, too? So, or is that just after the shield's popped? Do, do you think... Or, I'm sorry, Tomato. Sorry, I asked a question. <laughs> well, is the 2.5 seconds total? You shoot your first bullet in 2.5 seconds, they're done? Or are you saying you get rid of the shield? and If every and shot then... lands, if I'm at optimal range, I'm at the most optimal spot to kill the guy, the fastest I can kill this person from full health is 2.5 seconds. Hmm. With right? shields. With shields, right? So With all I'm weapons. Glad... With all weapons firing, right? Okay. So to me, that feels great, you know, because that's obviously going to dramatically change to into the 30 seconds plus if I'm avoiding fire, if I'm doing it right, if I'm on him, if I'm chasing him, you know, I'm not going to have guns on the whole time. To me that, you know, you're fighting for yeah. that spot to get the two second time. You know? But honestly, it's going to be like that. That is something I cannot really, really answer right now. So th this is something where we need player testing because we cannot just like take a look at like, you know, high skilled PVP players. We have to take a look how it feels for the rest of the game. If, if, if having a low TTK means that less people venture into, let's say, less regulated systems and avoid PVP. So let's assume we don't have any players in Pyro because of that. We might backtrack yeah. a little bit from that, right? But but honestly, like we'll see. We could also add like variations where we basically just say, hey, player versus player, or if you are a player and the other guy you're shooting at is a player, damage times three. We can do that, right? But but I cannot give you a definitive answer on this at the moment. We'll we'll have to see with testing. Yeah, a lot of stuff to okay. go. All right. Um, can I can I just ask one last question? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm still for it. the show here. <laughs> I'm going to get yelled at after this, but I, it's a burn. I got to ask because uh, we were talking about this when we were hanging out at the Citizen Con, right? Um, where do you see snub fighters? What's the role that you feel like they should fill? Where do you see them in the grand scheme of things and uh, as part of the battlefield? And do you feel like snub fighters are one of those types of systems that rookies shouldn't get into right off the bat and eventually as you start to get much better you kind of gravitate to these ships is that and i'm gonna that you're looking at i'm gonna tack on to that one also can snub ships use nav mode <laughs> uh, <laughs> shit bye, <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay so um okay so in general when we're looking at the archetypes right we have basically the same archetypes in all ship sizes, but basically ships getting smaller and larger and then trying to fill a role in there, right? Snub fighters, I would say, are like, for me, a snub fighter should not necessarily compete with, in terms of combat effectiveness with, with like an equally or with, with, a, with an archetype of a higher category. Like, I don't think a snub fighter like the Fury should have the same combat effectiveness as a Gladius, for example, right? And they are naturally lim limited anyways, because snub fighters, for example, have a smaller weapon capacitor, so they cannot... So why even like the, the Fury has like four size twos on Gimbal? I'm not sure if they're... Uh, so pro Fury probably gonna, yeah, probably gonna, gonna get Gimbals anyways, right? But that ship will not be able to put out the same DPS, and they're, they're flaky. Like when they're getting hit, they're, they're, they're down pretty much. So the question of what kind of role they fill is I mean they're the parasite ships mostly, right? They're not meant to be they're not meant to be like very, very durable. And like I'm not sure if that answers the question, but I don't know. Like the I mean, does the P fifty seventy two count as a snub fighter? It's basically a super small racer, right? Um so I, um, I mean, the only actual snub fighter we have is technically the Fury. Yes. Because the Merlin I mean, we've talked about the Merlin, the poor thing. I mean, we need to yeah. get it nose redesign and we need to get a weapon upgrade because the poor thing is just you know very yeah, but, but then right like <laughs> like i would see, i would see them as like like similar to like maybe similar to a scenario where you have like where, where i said you have to overwhelm the defensive the the fury or or the p52 or something like that, they are ships so you can use them for something um i don't necessarily expect a fury on its own to to take down a turret or something like that right um but i but in the numbers, it will still help, right? I also don't expect the Fury to necessarily win a, uh, uh, a duel against the Gladius. 
I would pretty sure like in most cases the the free would actually die unless like the pilot is so good that it's really like really not getting any hits on it and so on right but yeah it's um like in terms of effectiveness and everything i don't think the snubs should outperform ships of a of a of a bigger size they're just like they're the parasite fighters or parasite so ships. then why would i ever use a fury like it's, it's an honest question i mean it is if, it is it, 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 it is another ship it is another ship right like if, mm -hmm. if if you're in a situation let's say you're you're manning the um the uh let's say a fury or a p52 or something like that like there is one target there's one target more in the space that other that other players have to worry about so mm -hmm. that is that is where, where where i see that uh and like um even like if you have 10 furies of them fine they can still do some do some damage if they can get out of the out <laughs> of the hangar without breaking anything that is right but yeah, uh yeah. you you understand <laughs> what i mean right oh yeah okay yeah. power numbers i mean it, in a certain kind of way, it's kind of like that now in live where, you know, a really good Gladius pilot versus a really good Fury. It's it's a pretty even match right now, you know? Uh, I'd say I'd almost give it to the Fury. Um, okay. You know, especially in atmosphere, the Fury is dominant, super dominant. Uh, yeah, the the atmosphere tuning is, is, is hard to, is hard to um, go for now. The thing is, like, we have this um, older atmosphere tuning, uh, this old aerodynamic system, which works. Um, but due to the master mode tuning, they need to be redone because how good they fly is actually based on the accelerations they could put in space. Um, so I'm pretty sure that like some of the data uh, is a little bit rotten because we have just like so many ship records. We have like over mm -hmm. a thousand ship records. It doesn't mean that we need to tune separately uh, for, for, for each of them, but just the amount of flight controllers. You know what? I'll just check how many flight controllers we have because it's a <laughs> lot. Probably quite so a few. The, um, yeah, but it means like all of these usually have to be um, have to be uh, checked whether or not they're working, and it's just like a lot of stuff that's um, going mm. on. Nope, that squadrons. Ah, this is so fun. Let's open path. So, just flight controllers in the PU. We have three hundred thirty-seven at the moment. Nice. That's a lot of ships to tune. So, so it is where. So this, is, for example, also the reason why we um, where we basically just forgot the Hornet <laughs> at some point. Gave it this like overdue tuning because there's just so much data to deal with. Um, yeah. So yeah. Again, so that's why the, I'm surprised the, the that you. The fury is very. Sorry. So no, I was just going to say that's why I was so surprised that you guys were pushing this so quickly. Yeah, well, it's still better for the game. Yeah, yeah, like even forward. if like even even if like, if the one we want and so on suffer, for the overall health of the game, I think that is a that is a better change. Yeah, the active yeah, testing I mean, seems to help a lot. Patches go up and down. The flight's been good, bad, good, bad. I mean, we've had all kinds. I've been I've been through every patch, right? So I mean, I've, there's times where it's really great for PvP and times where it's not. We're about to go into a time where it's going to be really bad for pirates because they can't QED stuff, right? So it's it goes up, it goes down, it goes it goes yeah. all over the place, right? Um, yeah, this is like you know. a little bit the perks of like a game development. And just to be clear, this happens in every in every game, right? Yeah. Every game where you work on, unless you're really, 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 really experienced and know exactly what you're doing. I mean, I'm not going to say that <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing, right? But uh, I got to be honest, like some of the things are just hard to decide on. And some yeah. some stuff is just like, um, if you do the same game again and again and you... Then, then maybe it's it's easy, but like this, nobody created a game of that scale. Um, so there's just a lot of like questions that you have to answer, and there's multiple requirements from all sides. Right? You have like uh, the gameplay requirements, you have the aesthetic requirements, and so on. So it's uh, sometimes hard to 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 get the right path through it. So it's just you it's, know, it's just hard. It's oh, funny. It's, so hard. You, it's <laughs> funny you said that. You just make the same game over and over again, and maybe you get better at it because that's like a lot of people's problems with games is they can, they get the same kind of iteration on a game, and they're like, why isn't this changing enough to to stay with the times? So it's it's an interesting situation you guys have where you're working on this open with a bunch of people playing it in public who also are kind of sharing their their feedback in real time as their own interests in gaming changes because Star Citizen's able to grow as the industry does. Yeah, and right. um, let's be honest. Like some of the some of the things in Starsons are also quite quite old and outdated compared to other other games. But it's it doesn't mean that these things get changed, right? Um, there's a lot of stuff happening outside flight, and there's lots of stuff that's coming from Squadron over. So um, the game will ultimately get 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 more enjoyable than it is now. I love that. Mm -hmm. 
I want to finish off with a couple of rapid questions here. Just a few things that I'm, I'm curious <laughs> oh, about. Yeah, oh, we're going to try rapid, rapid questions. Qu <laughs> <laughs> it's like only hey, five minute answers. All right. So um, this is a little bit out of left field. Might not be able to talk too much about this, but control surfaces, atmospheric flight. Is there any information you can give on how hovering is going to be more difficult for players because of that? Um, it won't be more difficult. The, I mean, uh, is that based on the on the it's stuff based, you showed at CitizenCon? Yeah. So the idea that there's a heat system, the thrusters take over, and oh, you might that start to, uh, that is yeah. that is that is not implemented yet. So I cannot talk to that. Um, but the um, the overall pl plan with that is that if you're if you're hovering in a ship that's not made for hovering long, uh, meaning like if it doesn't have VTOLs or any kind of like uh, additional engines like the um, like the uh, Connie, for example, then um, you will be limited in terms of uh, heat or something like that. As I said, like details are still still pending on that. At the moment, mm -hmm. the focus is not on the control surface system, uh, mainly because there's so much other stuff going on. Um, later down the line, ships with VTOLs will just be able to hover longer. But maybe we'll also change something in that regard. We don't we don't know yet. Okay. Another one for you. Quantum boosting is that? Yeah. Will that replace blind jumps around planets? Mm, yes and no. So boosting, or in, in general, there's not a lot of difference between quantum travel and quantum boosting. Your your computer, basically, your ship computer decides if quantum boosting or quantum traveling is being used. Um, we will probably have or implement a version, a spline version of quantum boosting, but it's it will be it will be working similar uh, in okay. a similar way, I guess. Uh, but also that Q, uh, in general, the qu new quantum experience is not slated for 3 to 3. Um, and I actually don't know who will own it um, later later this year. So um, it, 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 can still, it can still change. But uh, you can be sure that we want to be able to quickly traverse from A to B. So um, because there was like the question, oh, do I need then to, to go around the um, OMs uh, around the planet instead? Um, probably not like... Um, we we'll probably will have some version of spline jumping. Cool. Last question that I have uh, is more of a subjective one. What is what are you most excited for that's changing in the flight model or combat experience in the near future? What's something that that you're really passionate about? All of it. <laughs> this, all of it is so cheesy, right? <laughs> you can't, you can't um, say that. That's that's too easy. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, um, I mean, obviously, I like that stuff and so on. But the the problem that I have when I'm asking when I'm getting asked these questions is, I know what kind of stuff we haven't done yet. <laughs> I'm looking I'm looking forward to the place where where I can be happy and say is like, yep, that is that is now a good pass of everything that I wanted to have in there, and it works. Once it works, right? And I see, and we see like climbing combat or. Uh, climbing numbers and players enjoying combat, then I'll be I'll be happy and I, I'm excited to getting to that moment. But I also know that the road ahead of that is like is hard to <laughs> to go through. So um, I don't know. Like I want to find myself in a situation where 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 I enjoy the flying so much again, so that I'm gonna play this game for ages. Um, at the moment, I'm not there yet. Um, but yeah, I'll try as much as I can that we'll get, that we'll get to that place. We appreciate that. Honestly, um, thank you so much for joining us, Yogi. One of the best parts about covering Star Citizen is that we can even talk to the people working on it. And the people who are working on it are also fans and players. That's uh, countless people who work at CIG came from the community, which is really cool. So thank you so much for joining yeah. us on this podcast. Avenger, thank you for uh, pinging me about this and um, coming and, and joining as well, guys. Before we go... I usually tell people where to find you and your content. Yogi, I'm not sure. Uh, it's the Star Citizen YouTube channel, I guess. <laughs> like, where, where can people go to find more stuff from you? Spectrum? From me? Yeah. Um, from Star Citizen. Um, yeah, I mean, there's the, the YouTube channel. There's Spectrum. Please, uh, if you have feedback and, and things uh, want to say things about the game, positive or negative, put this in Spectrum. Um, don't just like throw your throw your opinions out in Discord because it's very hard to pick them up there, right? If you 
if you f write a feedback thread, uh, don't necessarily try to uh, propose solutions because that is finding solutions is our job. But please write how you feel, right? Like what what's 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 what what doesn't work and or what works and doesn't work or not. If you want to do like big big white papers and like do calculations on how uh, how rotations and so on work by any means, go for it as well. Um, but keep it consistent and uh, focused because that is also then, then easier to digest. Um, yeah, as I said, like I'm not sure if there's actually if we have an official Reddit group. Probably the, there's a Star Citizen Reddit, but um, I, I oh, there's a, there's, there's a Reddit. There's a Reddit, Reddit right? <laughs> Lots comes out of there. Um, but there's like content every week from Jared. Uh, like there's official videos, like at least two or three videos every 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 week. So um, yeah. if you want to follow the project, please go there. Um, yes, and um, I don't know what else to say. No, that's um, it, man. Thank you for joining subscribe us. Subscribe to Space Tomato and Evan just one <laughs> Discord, uh, you know, YouTube channels as well and uh, all the other streamers out there. So I love you all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. And uh, Avenger, where can folks find your own content? Well, they can find me on Twitch at Avenger underscore underscore one. They can find me on YouTube at Avenger one. And I just want to say thank you to Yogi for coming in and taking time out of his day, out of his work schedule to come here and have a conversation with me and Tomato and I think that's important, man. I mean, uh, I've worked with other game companies and stuff, but nothing has been as forward and as open and as honest as CIG, right? And yeah, we've got some good times and bad and everyone's got opinions and sometimes it's spicy and not, but I really appreciate you coming in here, man, and, and having a discussion. And, you know, I I kind of find it funny because I got a whole bunch of people telling me like, oh my God, like, like you guys are going to fight on stream. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and at, so at the, apparently at the end, we're, at the end we're of the game, enemies. right? We're talking about a game, right? We're having we're yeah. talking about a game and fun, right? Yeah. So yeah, of course we're not gonna fight. I mean, I, I was here. considering we'll putting a TKO yeah. count we'll on later. the bottom of the of <laughs> the overlay. <laughs> so anyway, I really appreciate, it, man. Thank you so much for you know. I, I feel a lot better too. I have full faith in you and your team, you know. And uh, you know, we'll we'll keep on trucking away, right? So. But I appreciate yeah, it. Thanks, thank you thanks, so much. Thanks for the content. I mean, like, if anything, even if it's spicy, I actually like spicy content. Uh, content. <laughs> um, no, 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 seriously, <laughs> right? Because, because honestly, spicy content is usually fueled by passion, which in turn is fueled by negative emotions or positive emotions, but which in turn basically tells us, okay, there's something there, right? Mm. Um, so, yeah, by any means, like, um, play the game. Tell us what what Play is good, it. what is bad. We try to make it better. I mean, I, I mean, in the end, we want to make a game that is like enjoyable for the backers, uh, players. I'm not supposed to say backers anymore. I say players now. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> the members. All right, guys. Members, well, thank you yeah. again so much for joining me, folks. If you enjoyed this, consider subscribing. Or if you don't like ads on YouTube, check out our audio platform, supported by supporters, obviously, who also get to come and join this one live. So thanks again for watching the Launch Sequence podcast. This is, I think, probably my my conclusion on Master Mode's coverage. I'm, I'm ready to talk a little bit more about some of the other stuff. Uh, so I hope you guys got some good conclusive answers out of this, or at least it picked your brain a little bit more for your own thoughts. But thanks for watching. I'll see you all next week. Mm -hmm.